More now on that horrific crash of a World War II fighter plane at a Nevada air show killing nine people and injuring 69 more. One of the injured was commercial pilot Noah Jorenstead. Now you can see him running away from the crash. His shrapnel tore into his back, narrowly missing his lungs and kidneys. We spot chatted him there for you. He was covered in aviation fuel, which burned his skin. He's currently recovering from surgery at Northern Nevada Medical Center in Sparks, Nevada, and he joins us from there this morning. Noah, good morning. How are you doing, all right? Feeling any better? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Uh, feeling pretty good this morning. That's good to hear. Um, take us through those moments uh, before the impact, before the plane crash. Where were you seated? What did you see? What did you hear? I was uh, seated in box 43A, and I was watching, uh, I think it was the third lap, and I saw the, the galloping ghost, the plane that wrecked, uh, pitched up very violently. And as it pitched up, that kind of caught my attention because uh, of how fast it pitched up. And I, I watched it. And when it started rolling over and coming down, I knew something was wrong mechanically with the plane. So uh, I just looked up and saw it coming down. And I thought, all right, well, this is it. But I'm going to give it a shot and run and just hope for the best. And that's what I did. I mean, what are you thinking at that point? You're a pilot, so you know you could sense uh, that there was something wrong there, like you mentioned. What's going through your mind as you're, you're trying to run away from this thing, which is traveling at 500 miles an hour? Um, I just thought, you know, there's going to be a lot of parts flying and probably an explosion. And I honestly thought there's probably no way I'm going to get away from it, but I'm going to give it my best shot. And the sound was just so amazing. I mean, it just sounded like a, a missile on steroids just coming out of the sky. And it just hit so violently. And it, I kind of, at the last second, closed my eyes and just hoped and prayed. And it just kind of threw me across the ground. And right after that, I got up and ran on adrenaline for a couple seconds, as you can see in the tape there. Yeah. And then, um, and then I, I kind of collapsed. And then uh, it was a matter of seconds before spectators started to help. And to me, that's the most amazing part of the story is people came into that war zone and started helping. So did you realize, it's pretty amazing. Did you realize the injuries that you had sustained immediately? Did you know that you were hurt? I knew I was hurt, but I didn't know the extent of the injuries because I, I just didn't, you know, I, I felt my back and I felt that there was like something there that was missing and then I was bleeding from my head. So at that point I, I started making some phone calls, called my mom and my dad and just kind of told them what was going on and it was kind of hard to explain because no one really knew what was going on yet, you know. Could, so. you believe, could you believe, though, the devastation, I mean, the lives that were lost, to, to, to be able to, I don't know, pick yourself up and look around and see the, the result of this crash? It had to have been somewhat surreal. Yeah, when I, when I got up and looked around, it was, just, it was just a total war zone, just carnage everywhere and just, just looked like a bomb went off, and it was just really... Really an ugly scene. You're a pilot. Just one final question for you. Do you think that these air shows need to be curtailed? You constantly hear um, of incidents like this. It seems to happen too many. One, one time is too many times. But do you think that maybe from a safety standpoint, you need to kind of scale back? They call this the Indy 500 in the sky. Uh, you know, that's kind of a, a complicated question because, uh, I mean, this was a very, very freak accident, you know. And I, I think that particularly with Reno, it's going to be almost impossible for this to go on anymore. It's just, it's, it is dangerous. And when that many people get their lives taken away, it, it is pretty hard to justify continuing an event like that. Well, Noah, thanks for taking the time and, and joining us from the hospital this morning. We wish you the best in your recovery. And uh, again, stay safe and, and thank you.